What's up, everybody? Hi. Hey, welcome back to the channel. We are Travel Unfiltered. My name is Neil. And I'm Michaela. And today we're going to be talking about 10 things that surprised us about living in Spain. So if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and leave us a like as well. So you can probably already tell that we're from the US. Right. So moving to Spain and to Europe in general was a huge transition mm -hmm. just because things are so different. And right, right. Like some are good different, some are not as great different. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so there are some, a lot of things that kind of shocked us as we moved. Mm -hmm. um, some weren't as shocking because I think we had kind of prepared for it a little bit, right. but others were like, whoa, we didn't even know what was right. happening. Right. Yeah. So number one, the prices of everything kind of shocked us to see how cheap everything was from food to flights within Europe, as well as like clothing and stuff like that. Everything is like relatively inexpensive. Yeah. Where in the United States, you could go to the grocery store. I hear right now a dozen eggs is like eight bucks. Yeah. Just wild. Like we get, they don't do dozen eggs here. They do either six or 10 but 10 eggs is still only like a euro 50. So it's still relatively cheap. Yeah. So just things like that, like even they have like H&M here, so you can kind of directly compare prices and it's cheaper. Yeah. So. And like it's in stores that are like more American or like in America, I feel like the prices aren't as noticeable. Yeah. As far as like being cheaper, but, um, like groceries is a huge one. Right. Um, it's kind of funny because the American restaurants here are some of the most expensive mm -hmm. restaurants here. Right. Um, yeah. So that's just interesting. Like, mm. not something that I would have guessed. Yes. Um, like you could go out to eat at a local restaurant and spend maybe for the both of us like 25 maybe 30 bucks yeah and that's also what you would spend at mcdonald's or like a kfc or burger king for yeah. two of us so it's yeah. the same price but i would say lower quality so yeah and then like one thing i will say about flights is they are not typically as inexpensive as you see on right. like google flights like yeah sure the flight is that much but a lot of times like you have to pay extra for your seats and you have to pay extra for any other bags that you want mm. to take on and stuff like that so like if you don't care where you sit on the flight and you don't care um like if you're not traveling with anybody and all you're flying with is a backpack that you can right. put under your seat then the flights are you can find some super super cheap flights right. but right. like a lot of times like when we went to switzerland like we had all of our ski gear so we had to take another suitcase so you have to add that on and then mm. like we want to sit together on the flights yeah. so <laughs> a lot of times we choose our seats so that we can specifically sit together um and things like that so just keep that in mind when you're booking like yeah. it's still way less expensive than yeah. the us but like we're used to flying southwest and on southwest you buy your ticket and it comes with a carry-on it comes with a personal item it comes with two check bags yeah. like you have to check in but it's not assigned seats so you kind mm -hmm. of just hope for the best whenever you get on the plane like so that's kind of what we were used to before coming here so i think that's why it's such a shock i'm sure yeah. like, if you fly yeah. other american airlines you're kind of used to the oh there's a fee for this and a fee for this and a fee for this but mm -hmm. um we just weren't really used to that i guess right like the um, same way in the united states we get frustrated when they say your ticket is 249 dollars then you go to check out and it's miraculously 320 yeah that's kind of the same thing mm -hmm. like they'll advertise the flight as 59 dollars, and then you pay for extra baggage you pay for seat selection if you want to cancel your flight to you pay extra like in advance mm -hmm. so it's very similar but i think overall the prices are still a yeah. little bit cheaper absolutely so. so the second thing that kind of shocked us when we got here is that at least in bilbao i don't know if it's like this all over but at least in bilbao pretty much everything is closed on sundays yeah so you have to make sure that you have food to eat you have to make mm. sure that you don't need to go to the store for anything like some of the restaurants are still open so that's nice like mm -hmm. you can still go and get drinks and food and stuff like that but like grocery stores are closed clothes stores are closed yeah. like pretty much everything, everything. aside from restaurants yeah. are closed and even some of the restaurants are closed on sundays so that was really interesting 
our first couple of Sundays here, we were still living in a hotel, and that was miserable because we were rough. like, uh, you know, <laughs> and we used to go, like, we would go to the same cafe to get breakfast pretty much every morning because mm -hmm. it was just close to the hotel, and it was just something simple and easy, and that yeah. was closed on Sundays, so we were like, um, what, what do we yeah. do? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, but that was definitely something that was mm -hmm. a shock to us. It took a page out of Chick-fil-A's book and just decided, let's close everything. Yeah. So the next one is that everybody kind of walks at like a leisurely pace getting places. So we are fast walkers. Like we have some place to go. We're going to get there as quickly as possible. This one's got anxiety. So she likes to be five minutes early to everything, which is good. It's a great yes. thing. But <laughs> here they walk so slow and they kind of walk in like packs and they take up the entirety of the sidewalk and it can be very frustrating. <laughs> like I love them, They're, the people are so nice, so welcoming. Yeah. But this is just one aspect that I'm like, can we just walk a little bit quicker? <laughs> well, and like, I wouldn't even mind if they walked slow and stayed like in one area, but I'm like, Miss Girl, six people cannot walk <laughs> across this sidewalk yeah. at literally tiny, tiny little slow steps. Mm -hmm. And that's the total, I don't know if American or like, yeah. like, we just have that like rushed sensation that we're right. always feeling rushed right. and we just, like we've been trying to embrace the like slower pace of mm -hmm. life and you know. Just go with the flow type of thing. But I'm like, Miss Girl, this store closes in like an hour and I'm trying to like get all of this stuff in and I need to walk to get there mm -hmm. and <laughs> you're taking up the whole sidewalk and then you feel rude because yeah. like, I'm disrupting their pace of life and that's just what they're accustomed mm -hmm. to here. So I try not to and we've tried to like slow down like our rhythm and our mm -hmm. pace. But sometimes I'm like, I just want to get here and I'm so tired of being <laughs> behind the people who are walking slow. Yeah. yeah, we're totally the universal walkers <laughs> that are like sprinting yeah. to get from ride to ride to whatever like, mm -hmm. and that's transitioned here and it's not it was a shock for yeah. sure, just because we like to go quick and we like to maximize the time at the destination mm -hmm. instead of just like taking extra time to get there. So yeah, yeah, like she said, we're trying to adapt just because I feel like we'll get less frustrated if we're yeah. just like, you know what, let's take our time. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to adapt. Like, I think it's very important to assimilate into whatever culture you're currently existing in instead of yeah. trying to get them to change to what you mm -hmm. prefer. So we're trying to just like, get used to this and walk slower, like take more time, just enjoy the rock, the walk. So we're working on it, but it was definitely a huge Yeah, but shock. when I can see the train coming, <laughs> you're in my way and I need to sprint to yeah. get to the train. <laughs> so thing number four that was shocking to me was that um, right before their Christmas break, I went with Neil to his school mm -hmm. just to, they had some, like they're soccer like a, games going on. They're like an end of the year party. Yeah, type of thing. they invited me to go, which was awesome. Um, but I was expecting to like go and have to show my ID or passport mm -hmm. or something, and like check in and get a pass and all that stuff because that's what you have to do in the U.S. Like, like go to the front office and check in with everybody. Before yeah. You yeah. Yeah. Like you can't go into a school like the school that I worked at in the U.S. We'd have to even. Um, like scan our badges to get into most places within the school mm. and so there's just a lot more security measures in the u.s but i we literally walked in through a gate that was unlocked mm. and there was just kids like it's there were true. adults out there watching too but it was just like kids outside and we just walked into this gate nobody said anything <laughs> like nobody even asked what we were doing there nobody asked anything we just walked on up to the building and it's just so interesting like mm -hmm. in the u.s it's just such a different mindset and such a different culture of like security within the schools for good reason yeah um but they just don't have to worry about that here and mm -hmm. like we were talking to some of the teachers about it because i was like that's so weird like the front office in most schools in the u.s are right when you walk in so that you have to go there first and if you're walking around campus without a visitor visit pass or something like that like people will tell you to go to the front office you know things like that but it's just not a thing here and mm -hmm. the teachers are like yeah we don't really have to worry about that i'm like yeah it must be nice there's no like security guards out front there's no like security people walking around making sure that everybody's safe there's no locked doors really like when the school opens at 8 30 every door is unlocked until like six or seven because they also use it as like a community center for all the kids to still be able to 
go play in like a playground or something, they still use it for that. But there's no people like making sure everybody's safe because everybody's just safe. Yeah. So and like I've noticed that like when we've been walking around Bilbao because the school that he works in is like in another smaller little town outside yeah. of Bilbao. Um, so I think that's why they're even able to be a little bit more lax about mm -hmm. it. I've noticed that the schools in Bilbao do have a little bit more security. Like, um, we've been walking past a school and like they have to open like a garage door type of thing. And that's where all the parents go and pick up the kids and stuff like so that. So they're still secure. Yeah. Like not saying yeah. the kids are, are not safe. Yeah. But there's just so it's much. It's like a different mindset. Yeah. Of like yeah. what you have to secure them from, I guess. Like right. keep them safe from. Yeah. And a lot of times they have those gates because they're right off of streets. Mm -hmm. So the biggest threat to these kids is them running into the street and getting hit by a car. Yeah. But not somebody trying to take them or shoot up the school. Yeah. It's wild. The next thing that shocked us was the amount of history that you can see in like the mm -hmm. city, whether it's buildings or, or statues or um, just like the natural architecture, like the amount of parks, amount of like old buildings that are still preserved. I loved that. Like, yeah. that's so cool. Like, walking mm -hmm. around the United States and like whatever, anywhere you go really, except for like the East Coast that are super old, you don't see anything. You just see really new buildings and Taco Bells and H&Ms and... Yeah, so like a lot of times you just see like parking lots and um, like new buildings or mm -hmm. you go into a neighborhood and all the houses look exactly the same. Yeah. It's like carbon copy, carbon copy next, you know? Yeah. Um, and here it's just like you turn one corner and it's like this huge historic building that's been there for centuries. Yeah, and then you look around the other way and it's like this crazy modern building that looks mm -hmm. completely different. And then you turn the other way and it's like kind of somewhere in the middle. And it's just like, at least from what we've seen, it's not just like, okay, here's this one and then we're going to copy that and put it right next mm -hmm. to it. And then we're going to copy that and put it right next to it. It's just... Yeah. Um, like each building has its own character, its own history. Mm -hmm. And then they're all compiled together and preserved because that's part of the culture is the mm -hmm. history and the, all the events that happened in this area. So yeah. I was very pleasantly surprised. I love history. So getting to walk around and see a bunch of historical buildings is really cool for me. Like we, on my way to school, I passed so many of them and it's just like become commonplace to me now, which is so cool. Yeah. The sixth thing that surprised us was the amount of people that are just hanging out outside. Mm -hmm. Like you see kids from all ages, like I see kids who are in elementary school by themselves in a pack of like 12 of them yeah. just running around the streets with a soccer ball and or riding their bikes riding their all bikes. over, like we just see a bunch of these little like elementary like biker kids. games, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they're like biker games, <laughs> yeah and, and it's so crazy because there's people from all ages, like you see like college students, you see secondary students, mm -hmm. you see like young adults, you see everybody just kind of walking around in groups, hanging out with their friends. Mm -hmm. And none of them are really on their phones either. Yeah. Which is really cool. Like yeah. they're actually talking and hanging out and making jokes and living and being with each other. Yeah. So that was shocking because in the United States, it's very much like, let's all go to my house and we'll have Netflix on the TV while we all stare at our phones. Yeah. And that's like hanging out. So. Yeah, like we live next to the university here. Mm -hmm. And so anytime like we need to leave, a lot of times we'll see university students because we live pretty close. Yeah. And they're just like all over in little pods, like in the park and right outside the library and yeah. outside of the store and whatever. Or we see like kids hanging out right outside of our apartment and they're just sitting on the bench. They're just talking, laughing. Like it's mm -hmm. really, really so neat cool. to see like kids actually and people in general just interacting with each other versus like being so glued to your phone mm -hmm. um which like i know that i struggle with a lot of the times and i don't know like what the difference in culture is you know yeah, like i don't know i don't know what the difference is but um people don't have to distract themselves from the impending doom of <laughs> capitalism or <laughs> gotta love america yeah um this one kind of goes alongside that one there are so many old people just out and about walking around. They're very active. A lot of them seem very healthy. Mm -hmm. So like we were shocked. Like yeah. there, there are some elderly people in our lives that are for the most part, just kind of like not home ridden, but they spend a lot of time in their homes and they go well, it's to like, restaurants. If it's too cold, I'm not sure. going out. If yeah. it's dark, I'm not going out. And, yeah. and that's like just what sure. we've been accustomed to. Yeah. Um, but here like people raining, pouring rain. They just start walking around with their umbrellas. If it's dark out, we see people out at like 
10 p.m. Older it's people early. who are like yeah. still just walking around the parks mm -hmm. or walking to go meet mm -hmm. people at a restaurant or yeah. whatever. Like they're out all the time, which is super cool to see because like they're so active, which is not something yeah. that I feel like we see a lot in the U.S. I also think like it's so walkable here so maybe mm -hmm. we're just able to see it more here because yeah. we're just out and about more like mm -hmm. walking and seeing things happen but it's just really interesting definitely cool. something that that shocked us because there's this like they're moving and grooving and it was surprising at first i was like why are there so many old people out mm -hmm. but they've just lived here for so long and their healthcare system is significantly better than ours that they do better into old age like they're able to walk around they're able to be out Mm -hmm. It's just, it's co so cool. Like that shocked us because we're just not used to it. Mm -hmm. The eighth thing that surprised us was how late dinner is. Like mm -hmm. meals in general here are different than the United States, as you'd expect. Like in the United States, you have a decent sized breakfast because it's the most important meal of the day. Then you have a decent sized lunch and then you have a fairly large dinner, mm -hmm. I would say. Here in Spain, you have a small breakfast, like whether it's like a croissant or like an orange or just something small like mm -hmm. that. And then for lunch, you have like a sandwich, something, and that's usually at like two-ish, two-ish p.m. And then dinner is, it starts at eight, but that's like the early bird special. So yeah. dinner starts at like 10 p.m. here, like 9.30, 10 ish So that was very shocking because we were hungry by 6 p.m. And we're like, yeah. nothing's open. Like, okay, yeah. the kitchens aren't open. How do we get food? And I think that's the thing, like, it's not even like, oh, it's more socially acceptable to go eat later. It's like, no, restaurants no. don't even open for dinner a lot of times until like, 8 p.m. Yeah, like, like 7 or 8. 7 at the absolute earliest, and 8 is usually, like, the early time. Yeah, so. or, like, the restaurant is open, so you can, like, go in and sit mm -hmm. and get whatever's in, like, the... Like, you can get coffees and drinks and stuff like that, or you can Little, get... Little, like, tapas or pinzos or whatever. Yeah. But but you can't get, like nothing from the kitchen is open until right. after eight, which is wild because yep. I feel like by that time, I'm like already ready to go to bed. <laughs> like yeah, starting my bedtime routine at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very, it. we're used to it now. Like yeah. last night we ate dinner at like 9 p.m. Like we, we adapted to it. The first couple months were kind of tough because we were hungry at 6 p.m. And if we had to, we wanted to go out to get something we couldn't, we could go into the restaurant and get a beer or something like that, but no food. Yeah. So that was very surprising. Also, I feel like breakfast just isn't as prevalent here or right. like big breakfast. Yeah. And so that was interesting to get used to too, because if I wanted a quick breakfast on the go and wanted to just stop and get something, I'd go to McDonald's and get mm -hmm. like an egg McMuffin. But McDonald's here doesn't have breakfast. They have like right. a Mick cafe, which has like croissants and donuts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But they don't have like the typical breakfast yeah um so that's kind of was a hard thing too because i'm like i just want a quick <laughs> breakfast and i don't want to have to make anything but right. i also don't want just a donut for breakfast <laughs> right now like yeah and the last one that kind of ties into the, the previous one is that an entire meal here is a very like eating is a social mm -hmm. event so if you're gonna go out to a restaurant you shouldn't be there for less than two hours like two hours is like the average time to spend eating in a restaurant because a lot of times it's you spend half an hour just kind of talking with your drinks and then you have like a first course and then you have the main course and then you have dessert and then you spend another like half hour talking with the people that you came with. So it's a very like social event and we've kind of picked up on like you can spot the foreigners by how quickly they're in and out. And we were that way too. Yeah. Because we didn't know like our first couple weeks here, weeks or months here, we were in and out. Mm -hmm just trying to get our food, get out. Yeah. But here, it's a whole social event. But <clears throat> I think sometimes like we still are in and out just because sure. I'm like, I literally just didn't want to cook and I didn't <laughs> want fast food either. Yeah. So we came out to eat. I think the other thing that is hard is that the waiter or waitress comes and gets your order for food and drinks and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they leave and you don't see them again. Uh. <laughs> like in the US, there's like, Oh, you have to go back after the two minute or two bites yeah. like like yeah you'd have to continuously check on people mm -hmm. and it's Very just not service. the culture here mm -hmm. like i think that there's a balance right like you don't want your server coming up to you every two minutes like hey how's it going right, right. hey how's it going it's like <laughs> no i haven't even taken a bite yet like chill but here it's like i got your order and most of the time it's not even the See same you. server who brings your food right. or brings your drinks or whatever so then you're like hello we're ready to go <laughs> like 
but and that's totally normal. Like, yeah, like, but like in the U.S., you don't do that. Like I would never in the U.S. be like, "Hello, excuse yeah. me, can I get my check or something like that?" But here, like you have to let them know that you're done. Otherwise, to them, it's rude that they're interrupting and right. saying like, "Yeah." Hey, it's time for you to go. Right. You know, um, so it's just totally a different culture of like yeah. the dining experience. Yes, yeah, so we were just kind of like surprised at first because in the United States it's rude to flag down your server, but here you have to, mm -hmm. and that's just part of what it is. It's not disrespectful. It's not rude. They don't see it that way. It's just like, oh, you're ready to go. Okay, yeah. that's it. So yeah. very surprising. We are not prepared for that, but now yeah. we're kind of used to it. It's kind of no big thing now. The last thing that surprised us is how easy it is to get around here Ooh, yeah. using public transportation or walking. Like mm -hmm. it is wild because where we come from, you have to have a car. Like yeah, getting to. to our university on the bus was like, wow, like that's good public transportation. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> which is crazy because yeah. it's not, but um, standards were so low yeah, and now but, they're so high. But here, like, we don't have a car here. We don't have bikes or anything mm -hmm. like that. Like, pretty much anywhere that we go, we have to use public transportation or walking. Like, I guess we yeah. could get a taxi or an Uber or something. But it's not really necessary for the most part. Like, mm -hmm. we can get to and from the airport using public transportation. He gets to and from school using yeah. public transportation. Like, you can get to the malls and the, like, main shopping street and all that stuff using public transportation. And mm -hmm. it's wild. Um, just to see like how easy it is and I definitely miss having a car. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely miss having a car, but like we can just walk to the grocery store, mm -hmm. pick up groceries, walk back. Like yeah. it's not this big ordeal anymore mm -hmm. like it used to be. Also like fridges and stuff are a lot smaller so you can't really put as much stuff. Like in the US we just shut that <laughs> thing full. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just really like that was shocking to me because mm. I knew like, oh yeah, the train system in Europe is so good, but you don't like really know until you see it for yourself. Right. Yeah. And it's like, oh wow, like they they got their shit together. Like they know yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. It's crazy. And like that's been across the board. Like yeah. in Paris, do not take a taxi from the airport. Don't. Just take the train. In mm -hmm. Zurich, do not take a taxi to <laughs> from the airport. Take a train. And yeah. you know, like in so many places, like just take public transportation. So I better. promise it's so much easier. So much better, so much cheaper. All right, so that concludes our list of things that surprised us about living in Spain. If there's anything that we missed or anything that you want to mention, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Um, if you're not already, Please subscribe. It goes a long way here at the channel if you like this type of content. We do this as well as other travel vlogs and other travel type content. So if you are interested in that, consider subscribing. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Mm -hmm. All of that will be linked down below. Yes. And thank you for watching.